just took her and I felt there is nothing different with us. She was brought up in Moscow because her family evacuated during the Chechen war. Uh, she was having education. She had the same dream as me, to make a world better place for women. And suddenly her father decided it's not going to happen. Even so she was grown up woman, 20 plus years old, and he, he brought her back and she had to get married and she had to change her life completely and live in the city she never wanted to live. And uh, she could never work there because all the NGOs were closed because the head of Chechnya would never allow any human rights organization to be there. And since then, I just couldn't stop thinking about this story, couldn't stop thinking how on earth I have all these possibilities to study, to do what I want, to fall in love with who I want. And at the same time, in the same country, just two hours flight away from me, there is a girl who doesn't have this opportunity. And uh, yeah, that's, I think, the reason why I decided to tell these stories. And right now I'm working on another story about Sieda Soleimanova, who is also from Chechnya and who was much less lucky than the girls in my film who managed to escape. She also managed to escape, but she decided she doesn't want to go abroad. She decided she wants to stay in the country. She was afraid of being poor. She was afraid of knowing the language. She was afraid of feeling too lonely abroad. And she stayed. And this summer, her family kidnapped her with the help of St. Petersburg police and Chechen police, brought her back home. And now we know that we have reports that she is killed uh, as an act of honor killing. Um, of course, it hasn't been proven. Of course, it will never been proven because Chechen police will never, never will go and like and investigate this. They don't. Women are nothing. Like they, they don't have voice, right? Um, but I think it's important to keep telling these stories because as long as we tell these people, a lot of these people, some people in the story, only I love because their stories were told by media while they were escaping because voice is important. As long as we talk about people, their lives, the second we forget about them, their families can do anything to them. That's at least my experience. And yeah, uh, thank you so much for this awards. Uh, yeah, I'm really honored and I am really grateful to have this platform and to show this film and talk more about these women who are not, honestly, not they don't have any platform at all all over the world. So I'm glad uh, I have an opportunity to give it to them. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much. We're so honored to have you join us um, and grateful that your film was a part of the festival. Uh, we're, you know, not just a small community here today, but a, a large global community, more than 300,000 people watching or having access to this on our YouTube channel, subscribing to this. So the platform that you're a part of through Women Voices Now is, is big and here for you and, and growing. And we're really grateful for that. Um, I'm going to keep us moving to our next uh, award. We have three more award presentations today. So appreciate everyone being with us. Um, our next presenter is a very special member of our youth jury this year. Uh, Yara is here to present our best in youth documentary and I'll uh, give a quick intro of Yara as she gets ready to speak. Um, she's a boarding student at the Webb School of California, currently skipping class to be in this presentation. So we really appreciate your teacher giving you permission to do that and recognizing the importance of your hobbies that are becoming your careers and your passions. Um, after taking a class on media for social change, Yara developed an interest in filmmaking as a means for amplifying women's voices for justice and served as a member of our jury, providing critical analysis and feedback of the films, which she's here to share today. So thank you so much for being here, Yara. We're so glad to have you join us. And the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. What an amazing award ceremony. Hearing these stories is incredibly inspiring. And I'm so proud to be here today presenting this award and $500 of prize money to the winner of the best youth documentary. This category is defined as a documentary film by a 14 to 25 year old, which displays great overall potential, reflecting the filmmaker's keen interest in social change concerning women and or girls and the talent necessary to execute their project. Our choice for best youth documentary, Baby Blues, was submitted to the festival and was the only youth documentary that met the criteria of our festival. In an impactful eight minutes and 50 seconds, this film is a look at how postnatal depression can ruin new mothers' lives. Baby Blues is artful, genuine, and inspiring. It demonstrates that feelings which are disregarded as having the baby blues can be life-threatening. Topics like motherhood, depression, childhood, trauma, and suicide are discussed respectfully, especially because they came straight from the source, Elena Rafferty. Through the interview, 
Through the interview format, cuts to artful scenes of a young woman doing chores in the house to care for her children and walking towards the windy ocean highlighted Rafferty's emotional experience as she told her story. Something truly special about this short film is that it left space to talk about recovery, seeking help, and hope. Overall, this short film exemplified wonderfully how to thoughtfully engage people in learning about a heavy topic while leaving them with hope. And I love it very much. And I'm so happy to present it with this award. I just devastated that I missed my opportunity. I missed the opportunity that I had laid out to end my life. 